in the last few years, there have been many attempts to revive watch brands, a lot of those that have disappeared during the quartz crisis. Some have done it very well, others not as much, but the ones that succeed seem to embrace their past the most, and one of the brands that have done just that is Nevada Gretchen. Today I have in the Antarctic Spider, which is a thing of beauty. It's got a one-of-a-kind dial done in a way that I've never quite seen before. Big thanks to Nevada Gretchen for lending in the watch a few days. Really appreciate it. So let's get to it and check out the watch. Now, Nevada Grenchen is a brand that was estated in 1926 and had quite a number of accomplishments in the watch world. In the USA, they were distributed by the Croton Company, so you might see their vintage models with either Nevada or Croton printed on the dial. The brand eventually succumbed to the quartz crisis but was revived back in 2018 when Nevada Grenchen reached out and offered to lend in a watch to the channel, they gave me the option to choose any model they had. I was torn between one of the Chronomasters and this, but I found this dial to be just so striking. I had to see it in person, and it did not disappoint. The Antarctic is available in more traditional dial layouts, but this just looks so cool. It's a watch with a lot of personality, I find. So this watch was originally released in the 70s and after the initial relaunch of the brand, a follower on their Instagram posted and shared some images of his vintage Antarctic Spider. That was what inspired Nevada Grenchen to get the ball rolling on its reissue. At this point, they have a nice catalog of watches available, and if you follow their social media accounts, it looks like there's some more cool models coming down the pipeline, which is great. So I guess we should start with a closer look at the dial. The dial itself is silver with a beautiful brushed sunburst finish. Two unique things with it is, first of all, the vertical applied hour markers. Such a neat look and with the way the lines come from those and intersect at the hands is so cool and where the watch gets its name, the spider. At the nine o'clock, we have Nevada Antarctic printed, then the date, with date magnifier over at the three. The handset with those Dauphine hour and minute hands are well finished with sharp lines and that needle thin second hand looks great too. Although I will say it's about the same thickness as the printed lines on the dial so it can get lost amongst those lines and take a second to spot sometimes. The loom for me is the biggest negative with the watch. The markers fade very quickly and the hands, which are slightly bright, brighter than the markers, fade fast too. I sort of expected it to be not the greatest, so I wasn't surprised, but something to keep in mind if you're considering picking one of these up. Now, as much as the dial is the focal point of the watch, the case is also really well done too. I love how the lugs have that polished area at the top. It's an interesting look and something just a little different. The side profile of the case is very nice. It's a very nice looking case design overall. You do have that polished bezel that will probably pick up scratches over time, but it looks good on the watch. The case back is a screw down case back and under the hood is the Soprod P024, which is based on the ETA 2824 2. It's a 25 joule movement, beating at 28,800 vibrations per hour with a power reserve of approximately 38 hours. The crown is a screw down crown. It is easy to grip and use, and the winding action of the P024 is not bad at all. Now, if you go to the site, these are available on quite a few strap and bracelet options. I opted for the brown Italian leather, and it's a quality strap. It goes great with the watch, although this watch will work well with a lot of strap options. The strap is quick release and has a signed, well-finished buckle. Size on the watch comes in at a case width of right at 38 millimeters. 
The lug to lug is 44.9 millimeters. Lug opening is 20 millimeters and the thickness is 11.5 millimeters, including the sapphire crystal, which is treated with an anti-reflective coating. Water resistance on the watch is 100 meters. And here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, and I am impressed. Definitely brand to keep an eye on. They actually have a new release coming soon, the F77. I'm hoping to get in for a video. Now, cost on this watch starts at 750 USD on strap. If you go to their site at the moment, these particular models are sold out, but I'm told there is a restock coming very soon, sometime in February. Overall, I very much enjoyed the watch, and it's got a solid spec sheet, making it a great do-it-all everyday watch. Thanks again to Nevada Grenchen for lending it in. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.